The world is filled with the glory of God, and we say, thank you. The hills and valleys are filled with color, and we say, thank you. The vines and trees are filled with fruit, and we say, thank you. Our tables are overflowing with food, and we say, thank you. Our life is filled with love of family and friends, and we say, thank you. We fill this house of God with our voices, saying, thank you. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, as we enter into this service of thanksgiving and praise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. All creatures worship God most high. Sound every voice in earth and sky. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, brother, sun in splendor bright. Sing, sister, moon and stars of night. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. and rain you grow the gifts of fruit and grain hallelujah hallelujah dear sister water useful clear make music for your lord to hear hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, brother, fire so mirthful, strong. Drive far the shadows, join the throng. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So rich and fair, praise God in colors bright and rare. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All who for love of God. Forgive all who in pain or sorrow grieve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ bears your burdens and your fears. Still make your song amid the tears. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let us pray. God of all creation, thank you for the wonderful things you have made. Thank you for the universe full of stars and planets. Thank you for our world full of life. Thank you for making each one of us. Thank you for loving each one of us. Take these gifts we now offer back to you. May they be used to the glory of your name. We offer you ourselves and all the gifts you have blessed us with. Take us and use us to share your love with the world. Amen. A reading from the book of Job, the 38th, 39th, and 40th chapters. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Cart up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds in its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no further and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Can you number the months that they fulfill? And do you know the time when they give birth, when they crouch to give birth to their offspring and are delivered of their young? Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open. They go forth and do not return to them. Is the wild ox willing to serve you? Will it spend the night at your crib? Do you give the horse its might? Do you clothe its neck with mane? Is it by your wisdom that the hawk soars and spreads its wings towards the south? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes its nest on high? Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you declare to me. Will you even put me in the wrong? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God? And can you thunder with a voice like his? Deck yourself with majesty and dignity. Clothe yourself with glory and splendor. Pour out the overflowings of your anger. And look on all who are proud and abase them. Look upon all who are proud and bring them low. Tread down the wicked where they stand. Hide them in all the dust together. Bind their faces in the world below. Then I will also acknowledge to you that your own right hand can give you victory. This is the word of the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving, Northwest Synod of Wisconsin. I'd like to share with you today my favorite Thanksgiving hymn. This hymn was written by Reverend Martin Rinkert, uh, who served in the 17th century in Eilenburg, Germany. In 1637, the town of Eilenburg was overtaken with a pandemic. 8,000 of that small city's residents died because of the pandemic, including Rinkert's own wife. At the height of the pandemic, Martin Rinkert was burying 40 to 50 people each and every day. Immediately following the pandemic, Eilenburg experienced some economic difficulty and a famine. Martin Rinkert was forced to mortgage his future earnings in order to pay for food for his children. Uh, but despite all of that, he wrote the words to this beautiful Thanksgiving hymn. Rinkert originally wrote these words as a prayer. I hope you enjoy.
Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I bring you greetings from your synod staff and thank you for your own life of faith. I'm Greg Kaufman and I live on a farm outside of Chippewa Falls with my wife Diane and, her, and our daughter and her family. I'm thankful that as we shelter in place, which we've been doing since March, I can do it with my granddaughter just up the farm driveway from our house. What you're looking at is a view from my deck taken a few years ago. I'm thankful that God placed the rainbow in the sky to remind God not to wreak havoc on us because of how we treat each other and in particular how we treat God's creation. Each year when I orientate new participants in our Synod Lay School of Ministry, I remind them of this truth. In response to God's amazing grace, which has already saved us, we don't have to spend time trying to save ourselves. We are free to serve God by serving our neighbors and God's amazing creation. Today's Thanksgiving time sermon will focus on that second part, serving God by caring for God's amazing creation. I'll use a variety of biblical texts to sharpen our focus on God's creation and our place in it. Thanksgiving, you might ask? In 2020? Seriously. I mean, 2020 is already a year for the history books. And I'm taping this sermon the day prior to the November 3rd election. And you're, of course, watching it afterwards. There's a COVID-19 pandemic going on with over 230,000 people just in the United States who have died because of it. That's over a quarter million. And it's rising. That added to extreme weather conditions across the globe, fires and hurricanes due to global warming. How are we supposed to be thankful in 2020? What am I thankful for as I shelter in place? As I share examples from my life, think of yours. If you are viewing this sermon in your home, pause the video and talk as a family about things to give thanks to God for. Keeping in mind our focus on creation care, here are a few of mine. I'm thankful that I can help my granddaughter develop a deep appreciation for God's creation and a sense of her role in it. I'm thankful for the surprising radical promise embedded in our gospel lesson today from John chapter 1. God chose to pitch God's tent here on earth. In verse 14 where it talks about that, the Greek word for that, skene, means to pitch tent. The word that created the earth became flesh and dwelt among us. And as we know from the ending of Matthew's gospel, God promises to be with us always in a COVID-19 world. I think that matters. And I'm thankful for the 1993 ELCA social statement called Caring for Creation, Vision, Hope, and Justice. It provided a Christian understanding of our role as humans to serve the creation. I'm thankful that in 2015, Pope Francis issued an encyclical letter titled, On Care for Our Common Home. 
And it sounds a lot like caring for creation, vision, hope, and justice. I'm thankful that as a national church, in our 2019 assembly, we endorse the Earth Charter. It includes 16 principles, and it ends with this hopeful vision of the way forward. It reads, Let ours be a time remembered for the awakening of a new reverence for life, the firm resolve to achieve sustainability, the quickening of the struggle for justice and peace, and the joyful celebration of life. Each of the above statements build on the varied biblical perspectives on our place in creation. And so I'd like to talk with you about a couple of those varied biblical perspectives today in this Thanksgiving sermon. I'm thankful that we don't have just one creation account, but many. We need them all to understand our place in this interconnected ecosystem. We are probably familiar with Genesis chapter 1. I'm guessing it's because it's the first chapter in the Bible. But almost no one thinks to look to God's conversation with Job in chapters 38 to 41 for a very different perspective on creation. Or some of the Psalms, like Psalm 74 or 104. We'll do some of that together in this sermon. So pull out your Bibles, open up your Bible app on your phone or device of your choice, and follow along. Historical background always helps. Just like knowing that this sermon was being taped the day before our elections, and it's being viewed in the midst of a pandemic, it shapes how we hear things. Most of the creation material in the Bible was shaped by the experience of the Babylonian exile. During that time, the Israelites had lost their land, their political autonomy, the temple, their homes, their king, and they asked, can God be trusted? And it was in that context that the priestly writer, who put together the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, which includes Genesis 1. It's in that context that he put that together. And Job did his work just after they returned from that exile to their devastated homeland. Quick look at Genesis chapter 1. When your world has lost all order, you need an orderly creation account. When you feel insignificant and powerless, it's helpful to know that you have dominion what does it mean to be created in the image of God? In the ancient world, an image or a statue representing the actual presence of the ruler was placed strategically throughout the empire, and it reminded the ruler's subjects how they were to live. They were to live as if the king was actually present watching them. So how can your or our care of creation in our daily lives Remind others of God's love, of God's creation and everything in it. That's what it means to be created in the image of God, to stand in for God. And then there's Job 38 to 41. Remember, Job was written shortly after their return from exile. And when they returned, they tried to go back to the way things were. They wanted to build another temple to move back into their old homes, rebuild the wall around Jerusalem, make it just the way it was before exile. But there was no going back. They were a vassal state now. They were no longer an independent kingdom. They weren't going to be ruling the world. In fact, when the old people who had gone into exile and who had lived at the time of Solomon's temple saw the new one, they wept. This was a very sad excuse for the glory days, indeed. Job's four chapters on creation decentralize people. We aren't the crown of creation. In fact, most of it isn't about us at all. In this four chapter speech by God about creation, humans are only mentioned in one verse. That's chapter 38, verse 26. And there, only to be reminded that God brings rain to the desert land where no man lives, and which is empty of human life. God delights and cares for all God's creation, 
not just humans. Whole parts of creation are for God's enjoyment, not ours. Wild things we can't tame are talked about in chapters 39 and 40. The greatest of the wild things, behemoth, God made just as God made humans. That's in chapter 40, verse 15. The king of all creation isn't us. It's Leviathan. That's in chapter 41. In Psalm 104, pictures Leviathan as God's huge rubber ducky to play with. In this long speech, God asked Job 72 questions about creation, and Job can answer none. What questions might God be asking us now? Imagine if Job's perspective on creation and our place in it had dominated European culture. It's something to think about in the midst of climate change caused in no small part by our misuse of the gift of creation. How might a more accurate understanding of Genesis 1 or Job's perspective change how you and your family think about and interact with the environment? How can we show our thankfulness that God has entrusted the creation to our good stewardship in our personal lives, our families, and as a congregation? How can we actually be the image of God as we make our daily life choices? How can Job's pointed reminder that we aren't actually in charge and that God values all of God's creation, including what we humans don't, give us the encouragement to approach our care of creation from a more humble point of view. I want my granddaughter to inherit from me a healthy climate, world, environment to raise her family in. Maybe right here on our farm. Maybe the house I'm currently living in. Today I'm thankful that we have the knowledge and the tools to do our part to care for God's creation. We have a whole field of science devoted to helping us understand climate change and deal with it. But most importantly, we have varied biblical stories to undergird our resolve, challenge our self-centeredness, and the promise that we are not alone. God is in this with us. Thanks be to God. And all God's people say, Amen.
Ever faithful Lord, ever giving Son, ever present Spirit, for the many gifts you grant us and the opportunity to enjoy these things, for your daily provision, and for the constant signs of your healing love, for the hope amidst despair, and the light which always shines, for all these things, thank you is just so inadequate, but it's all we have, to show our gratitude in word, in thought, and in action. So thank you, Lord, and may our thanks move beyond words to transform us into thankful folks. Faithful folk, seeing folk, folk who see the need and see the need to act, folk who love to live and live to love, folk who serve you by serving others. Help us to be amongst those who include the excluded and being in those who are marginalized. That when the opportunities come our way to be healers of division and hurt, to be peacemakers and restorers, we won't be found wanting. Loving, personal Father, we bring before you those people and issues that are closest to us and that occupy our minds at this time. Mighty, wonderful Father, we bring before you people and issues from around the world, including those we'll never know personally, but who remain our sisters and brothers in you. Transforming, healing Father, help us to make the light shine in dark places, to make peace known in violent places, and to bring hope to despondent places. Our prayers, spoken and silent, are brought to you now in the name of your Son, Jesus, the healer, includer, and redeemer forever. Amen. God of all goodness, we give you praise and thanks for all the blessings of this life. We are grateful for the gift of food and the opportunity we have to feed others in your name, the blessing of shelter and the challenge before us to care for the homeless, the love of friends and family, and your call to love those who are lost and alone the fellowship of the church and the presence of Christ in the lives of our needy brothers and sisters. You have given us much, Holy Lord, and you expect much of us. Help us to accept your blessings and your challenges with gratitude. And may we find that through your grace, blessings become challenges and challenges become blessings. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. If your congregation is engaging in home communion, I invite you to do so now. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Go into the world showing a gentle attitude toward everyone. Be joyful and thankful. Fill your mind with those things that are good and deserve praise. Things true, noble, right, pure, lovely and honorable. Put into practice what you have heard here. And may the God who gives peace be with each of you. We go in the peace of Christ to love and serve all creation. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving. God the Creator triumphantly raise. Who fashioned and 
made us, protected and stayed us, still guides us on to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, God's light goes before us, pillar of fire shining forth in the night. Till shadows have vanished, darkness is banished, as forward we travel from the light into in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, deeps of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing the glad and oration song let us raise. Thanksgiving, the God in the highest Hosanna.